Okay guys, welcome back to another video. In this one today I'm just going to talk about tools you will need as a site engineer. So I'm just going to go through some tools every good site engineer should have in their toolkit. Tools you will need to carry out your job as a site engineer. So uh, let's get into it. So to start off with, you're definitely going to need a sledgehammer. I use a 14 pounder. This is just used to just bash pegs in around site. Or usually pegs, can use it for anything. So to just to put pegs or marks on the ground, just to denote different things. So it might be a manual, might be a profile, whatever. So sledgehammer, definitely going to need one of them. Definitely going to need a lump hammer. Similar to sledgehammer, just to just to put some mainly uses for pins on site. So uh, just putting it putting in pins. So say you're pinning out a road or or putting pins in for manuals or or whatever or or you're putting in corner points of a footing. So sledgehammer, lump hammer. Move down to the next page. Definitely going to need a claw hammer. So just say you're making a, making some profiles and making a traveller. You're going to have to build that with a with a sledgehammer or claw hammer. Sorry. You know, just just make it up. Put some nails in. So you're just going to need one for any reasons. Bolt level. Just check. It's just this is just a miniature level basically. Just make sure I, um, just a small areas level. So checking a bit of brickwork or block work or just checking your your profiles are level. This takes us on to spirit levels. I usually just have a medium sized spirit level and a small spirit level. So I've, I've got a 600 mil spirit level and I've got a medium one which is like 1.2 or a meter long. And this is just for checking checking things at level really or checking things at plumb. And this brings us on to the automatic level with staff or dumpy level. This is a precise, um, this is the most precise thing to check levels with in my opinion. Um, apart from maybe a digital level or a more precise one, but I I'd use this to check brickwork or block work, or just use or I can just use it traditionally to just throw levels around site. But I'd say this is more accurate than a, a total station, especially when you're checking something like brickwork. I'd always use a dumpy level, and uh, you need the staff with it, of course. And sort of goes with the automatic level. You definitely need a surveyor's book. This is, I always have this in my pocket all times. It's just handy to take notes in. It's weather resistant. This is such a good brand chart, well. And uh, I like this kind here. I don't know if you can see from the, the image. So this is used to take a level. So you have your back site, intermediate site, foresight, height of collimation, and then you work out your reduced level. I might do a video on how to actually use the level book in the future. And then just have your comments up one side. But really good books, can't recommend them enough. You'll need a handsaw, definitely. It's again for making profiles and travellers. So just that just sort of explains itself that one. You'll definitely need some string line. I use so much string line. And uh chalk line's an optional one. You know, and I, I know a lot of engineers use chalk line for various applications. That's basically just a contraption where you just add add some powdered chalk into into some string and you can snap it and it leaves a visible line to work to. So string line, definitely. I like this nylon string line because you can get some more stretch in it and you can really tighten it up. And that brings on to the next one, a plumb bob. Plumb bob, just to check something's vertical, check something's plumb. Good for finding the centre of things too. I rarely use one to be honest with you, but really good handy thing to have in your toolkit. Pins and pegs, definitely going to need pins and pegs. For pins, we, we usually just use 10 mil rebar cut down. So I'll just zoom in here. So this is a good example here. So he's pinned out a road here. And th there's no other way apart from pins to do this, I'd say. So you pin it out, put your string line onto a cut level. And uh, the curb layer will just follow that around. Pegs, similar thing. Use I use pegs for profiles on marking out anything on site. Maybe where just some general earthworks are or, or where a manhole is. Put a peg in, can write on it. And um, pegs. Pegs and pins, marking out on site, setting out. Survey nails and masonry nails. These survey nails are used for putting stations in. So you'd put a survey nail down, survey the top of it, and then you know it's eastings and northings and level of that point there, and that's a station. These masonry nails I usually use for footings. So uh, if a uh, concrete footing has just been poured, I'd put the corner points of the plot in with these masonry nails, but you can also use these as stations, but I definitely prefer a survey nail. 
I'm down. Spray paint. I use so much spray paint as a setting out engineer. Very handy. Comes in all kinds of different colours. Different colours come in different things. So definitely recommend buying some good spray paint. And similar with the marking theme, some good chalk and marker pens. So you, you can just get your normal chalk like this. It's like a plastic kind of chalk. Good. Doesn't rub off in the, in the wet. Which is really handy. These are really good. These are known as welders, welders chalk or French chalk or engineer's chalk. It's really good. You can really get some fine detail with these. I'd recommend these. And of course, you can't really beat a black marker pen as well. And that brings us on to setting out instruments. You're definitely going to need something. And what you use really depends on the, on the task at hand. If you're just doing a, a survey, a GPS or GNSS might be better for you. But if you're wanting something a bit more detailed, more accurate, definitely go with a total station. I use a total station most of the time. It's loads of different brands. But the um, brand I use is TS12 Plus, which is just like this one here. Uh, yeah, and I definitely recommend um, a little detailed prism like this. So if you're doing, so if I'm setting out some footings, I'd use this to get the corner points in because you've got to be mega accurate. So, um, so yeah, and of course you need the detail pole and the prisms as well. And that brings on to targets. These retro targets are great. You can just stick these anywhere, shoot shoot your point in a reflectless mode, and uh, once you've got it aimed up and you shoot a point, you can survey that and batch your station. Instead of um, a survey nail, you can just stick these around site or if you're in a built-up area. These are absolutely great. Really quick setting up, and, um, and if you put them in somewhere quite solid and steady, they're just as good, and I firm. it's just so much quicker. Of course, every good engineer should have a calculator in his pocket. Um, I like this type, personally. I've always used one of these, so I've always got one of these in my pocket when I'm walking around. And of course, every good engineer should have a tape measure in his pocket. Uh, just a note on tape measures. If you're using a big 50 meter tape measure, which I often do, just uh, I prefer the steel banded ones because uh, the plastic ones can stretch and contract in the heat, which will, uh, which will, affect, will, which will affect your measurements. So a steel banded one, I would definitely recommend. You can get chains, and I've never seen chains apart from in a book, but um, I, I know some people still use uh, surveyors chains, but I, I've never seen them. And another thing you're gonna need is manual keys. So these are just used to get into manuals. Self-expansion really. And of course, to get on any construction site, you're gonna need proper PPE. So a high-vis jacket, boots, and a helmet is a minimum. But some sites insist on goggles, and uh, you should always wear gloves for whatever task you're doing, of course. And just a note on some optional tools. A shovel is always handy. An adjustable spanner to get to site if it's locked up or Harris fences is in your way. Adjustable spanner should get you through there. Uh, rotating laser level, depending on what, what task you're doing. This can be really handy if you just want to get a level a level pad somewhere. You, you know, it's, it's one-man operation, so you just need that. Uh, claw hammers, I mean, um, a crowbar is always handy. Um, if, if something's hard to get into, say a manual is hard to get off, just pop it off one of these. And uh, extra set of legs is always handy. Sometimes you want to use your total station and your dumpy level at the same time. Perfect if you have a spare set of legs. And um, a camera is always handy. I just use my phone, but um, but yeah. And just a quick note on software. As a site engineer, it is really helpful if you have a, have a grasp of software. So AutoCAD is a big one. Or CAD. If you, it, it doesn't matter. It doesn't have to be AutoDesk. It doesn't have to be AutoCAD. There's loads of different types of software out there. But some some knowledge of CAD is really helpful. And uh, there's 3D CAD, which is even better. Really handy. But uh, I just use 2D CAD, AutoCAD LT. And um, yeah, really good to know as a site engineer. Can save you loads of time. And of course, Microsoft Excel is, is really helpful as well. So um, there are all the tools. I've... Um, I think a uh, good site engineer needs. Let me know if I've missed any in the comment section below or if there's any, any more you think you'd like to add. But yeah, that's it for this video. Um, thank you.